Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Vitraga Pinzon, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the toes of the foot. But before we start, don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin. The anatomical position. By definition, this is when a patient stands erect with the face and eyes facing forward, arms are extended, hands are facing forward, and the heels are together and the toes are pointed forward. This is known as a neutral position. Do not forget it. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning and Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. The toes. In the medical field, the toes are also known as digits, like the fingers in the hand. But before we jump into the positioning, we first have to review the anatomy of the toes. The digits of the foot are numerically named 1 through 5, starting from medial to lateral. It is very important not to confuse the order in which the digits are named. Let's begin with the anatomy. The big toe is also known as the first digit. The index toe is the second digit. The middle toe is the third digit. The fourth toe is the fourth digit. And the little toe or the pinky is known as the fifth digit. There are also sesamoid bones that are underneath the first metatarsal. Now let's break them all down. There are 14 phalanxes in the foot, just like there is in the hand. The first digit. The first digit has two phalanxes, the distal phalanx and the proximal phalanx. In between these two phalanxes, there's a specific joint that you must know, which is known as the interphalangeal joint or the IP joint. Moving proximal, there is the first metatarsal. And in between those, joint space is known as a metatarsal phalangeal joint, or the MTP joint. Moving proximal, this is known as the tarsal metatarsal joint, also known as the TMT joint. Remember, joints are named according to the bones that are being articulated. So if you're having a brain fart, just remember your anatomy. Now let's move on to the second through fifth digits. Just like in the hand, the second through fifth digits have three phalanxes. The distal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the proximal phalanx. Within these phalanxes, there are specific joints that you must know. The distal interphalangeal joint, also known as the dip joint, and the proximal interphalangeal joint, also known as the pip joint. Next, we have the metatarsals, and in between them, we have the metatarsal phalangeal joints, or the MTP joints. Remember, joints are named according to the bones that are being articulated with. So if you forget, just remember your anatomy. Please make sure that you review and be knowledgeable with all the anatomy because knowing your anatomy is very important for the positioning. Let's begin. AP and AP axial projection. Position of the patient is seated or supine. Position of the part. Foot is placed plantar side down and the toes are against IR. Centroid is perpendicular to the MTP joint of the digit of interest or your centroid can be perpendicular to the third MTP joint if you want to see all the digits or toes at the same time. A 15 degree cephalic angle can be used to visualize the digits joint spaces. The 15 degree cephalic angulation is what I use when I take images of the toes. The foot can also be elevated 15 degrees with a perpendicular center A to open up the joint spaces as well. Make sure to collimate the entire digit of interest in the field, including the distal part of the metatarsal bone for the specific digit or you can collimate all the digits approximately one inch around all the sides of the toes, including the distal part of the metatarsals, if you want to see all the digits at once. This depends on the doctor and also the protocol in your clinical setting. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's look at the perpendicular and axial projections. This is the perpendicular center array, while this is the 15 degree cephalic angulation. Do you see the difference between them? As you can see here on the perpendicular center A, you are unable to see the joint spaces correctly. While on the 15 degree, you're able to clearly see the dip and pip and interphalangeal joints. When I was in x-ray school, I was always taught the 15 cephalic angulation for all my toes. Because you're able to visualize in better detail the anatomy of the toes. But the perpendicular center A can be used if you want to have visualization of the toes, for example, in a trauma situation. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is an image of all the toes of the right foot. What is a projection? This is an AP axial projection. What is the position of the part? The digits are neutral. Now let's practice our anatomy. The distal phalanx, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx, 
the dip or the distal interphalangeal joint, the pip or the proximal interphalangeal joint, the IP joint or the interphalangeal joint. Next is your metatarsal, or to be more specific, the third metatarsal, the MTP joint or the metatarsal phalangeal joint, and lastly, the sesamoid bones. Now let's move on to the PA projection. The position of the patient is prone. Position of the part, foot is placed dorsal side down and the digits are against the IR. Remember to elevate the IR in order to reduce superimposition from the foot on the toes. As you can see here on the right hand side, when you elevate the foot, the IP joint spaces are able to be seen because of the natural curvature of the toes. Centroid is perpendicular to the third MTP joint or the MTP joint of the digit of interest, depending on the protocol. Make sure to collimate all the digits or the digit of interest in the field, including the distal part of the metatarsal bones. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is an image of all the toes of the left foot. What is the projection? This is a PA projection. What is the position of the part? Dorsal region of the foot is against the IR. Now let's practice your anatomy. The distal phalanx, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx, the dip joint, pip joint, the IP joint, the metatarsal, the metatarsal phalangeal joint, or the MTP joint, and lastly the sesamoids. As you can see here on this picture, a 15 degree angulation was not necessary because of the natural curvature of the toes. You're able to see all the joint spaces clearly. Next is your AP oblique projection. Position of the patient is seated or supine. Position of the part, foot is placed plantar side down, immediately rotated 30 to 45 degrees from the IR. Centroid is perpendicular to the MTP joint of the specific digit or perpendicular to the third MTP joint if you want to image all five digits. Collimate the entire digit of interest in the field, including the distal part of the metatarsal bone for the specific digit. Or if you're imaging all the digits, make sure your collimation box is approximately one inch around all the sides of the toes, including the distal part of the metatarsals. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? We're imaging all the toes of the left foot. What is the projection? This is an AP projection. What is the position? Foot is placed plantar side down, immediately rotated. Now let's practice your anatomy. Distal phalanx, medial phalanx, proximal phalanx, the distal interphalangeal joint, the proximal interphalangeal joint, the metatarsal, the metatarsal phalangeal joint, and finally the sesamoids. Lastly, the lateral projection, lateral medial or medial lateral projections. Position of the patient, lateral recumbent. Position of the part, foot is placed lateral with a digit of interest extended while the other digits are flexed or folded on the foot. To prevent any type of superimposition from the other toes, use tape, gauze, or popsicle sticks. Centroid is perpendicular to the pip joint of the digit of interest if you're talking about the second through fifth digit and the IP joint if you're talking about the great toe, as you can see here on the right hand side. Here's a better illustration of the great toe and the centroid at the interphalangeal joint of the great toe. And here's examples of using a popsicle stick in order to remove the superimposition from the toe of interest. Remember, it's very important not to force your patient in order to get an image. Work with your patient in order to get the best image as possible. Collimation entire digit of interest in the field, including the distal part of the metacarpal bones. My example here on the right hand side is not very good because the other digits are superimposing, but you understand what I'm trying to say. SID is 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Here are some examples. As you can see on the right hand side, this is the second digit in profile, while on the left hand side is a great toe, or the first digit. Make sure to isolate the digit of interest and remove the other digits out of the way in order to have a diagnosable image. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the first digit. What is the projection? This is a medial lateral projection. What is the position? The foot is placed laterally, 
and the digit is extended. Now let's practice your anatomy. The distal phalanx, the proximal phalanx, in between them is the interphalangeal joint, the first metatarsal, the metatarsal phalangeal joint, and lastly the sesamoid bones. Please make sure that you review and be knowledgeable with all the positions. The next section are special projections and methods. The tangential projections for the sesamoids. The Lewis method. Position of the patient, prone. Position of the part, the great toe is hyperextended or dorsal flex and adjust the heel of the foot in order to be perpendicular with the horizontal plane, as you can see on the right hand side. Make sure to hyperextend the toe and the perpendicular heel to move the soft tissue of the foot from obstructing the sesamoid bone, the first digit. As you can see here, this is a bad example and do not do this. Incorrect positioning will obstruct the sesamoid bones. Centroid is perpendicular and tangential to the first metatarsal phalangeal joint Make sure to collimate the entire metatarsal head and profile and both of the sesamoid bones. SID is 40 inches. And remember to label correctly. Next is the tangential projection of the sesamoid bones. This time, this is known as a Holly method. Position of the patient is supine or seated. So this is the opposite from the Lewis method. Position of the part, the great toe is hyperextended or dorsal flexed and adjust the heel of the foot in order to be perpendicular with the horizontal plane of the IR. Make sure to hyperextend the toe and the perpendicular heel to remove soft tissue from the foot from obstructing the sesamoid bones. Centroid is exactly like the other one, perpendicular and tangential to the first MTP joint. Collimate the first metatarsal head and profile and both of the sesamoid bones. SID is 40 inches and remember to label correctly. Now let's look at the Lewis method and the Holly method. As you can see here, the sesamoid bones are both in profile. Depending on the patient condition and how the patient is able to be positioned, either of the methods can be used. Remember to practice and study and take lots of notes. Practice, practice, practice with your friends and family in order to build up your positioning skills. Review your basics. Remember, everything builds on top of each other. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. You can also follow me on Instagram at lazybones underscore radiology, and also on Twitter at lazybonesradio1. Thank you very much. Have a great day.